What are business advisory services and why is it my belief that is, it is one of the most underutilized areas of opportunities to attract really good clients into your business? That's what I'm gonna attempt to talk about in this video today. If that sounds like an interesting concept, please give the video a thumbs up and as a way of, very brief way of introduction to myself, my name is Anthony Anderson, CEO of a company called Elite Resource Team. For the last 10 years, we have helped financial advisors and CPAs come together to form teams, and to bring more proactive and holistic client value to clients, especially successful business owners. So let's talk a little bit about business advisory services and where it fits into the marketplace as a whole and how it can potentially benefit you, as I assume you are a financial professional or CEPA watching this video. The first thing to understand is it's part of the virtual family office. It is my, in my opinion, it is one of the five most important areas of a virtual family office, and not only is it one of the most important areas, like I said at the intro, it's the most underutilized. So we need to start by talking very briefly about what is a virtual family office and what are the five areas that a virtual family office should be offering to their clients. So we'll do a little VFO here in the middle. And in fact, I just released a video that talked about the difference between a single family office, a multifamily office, a virtual family office, it's free, it's on our YouTube channel. We'll be sure to post a link in the description of this video below. So if you haven't seen that video, go over there, check it out. But very briefly, virtual family office, as I said, five main areas, okay? That's five. Over here, we're gonna have tax. So this is tax planning, this is tax compliance work, things like how do we proactively plan to mitigate estate tax, income tax, long-term, short-term capital gain tax, tax planning, tax mitigation strategies, typically CPAs, bookkeepers, tax attorneys, and other type of niche experts operate here. Next, we would have, we'll call it risk mitigation. Risk mitigation would be things like property and casualty insurance, like captive insurance companies, like life insurance, like, like annuities, anything we're doing to mitigate the risk for an individual or for a business. Next, over here, I'm just gonna say WM, which stands for wealth management. Okay, so that would be the 529 plans, the retirement accounts, the crypto, the real estate, etc. Next, you're gonna have legal services, and the legal services are the actual drafting of the will or the trust. It's not the funding of the, of, of the insurance for the estate plan or funding of the insurance for the buy-sell agreement. It's the actual drafting of the buy-sell agreement documents. It's the work that the attorneys typically are doing. And then last here is the topic of this video, which is the business advisory. Business advisory services. I think the reason it's one of the most underutilized of these five bubbles is because it's a little bit intangible, right? It's kind of this concept that's much harder to wrap your arms around than a tax return. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is give you a couple of examples and talk about why business advisory I think is so powerful and hopefully make this a little bit more of a tangible concept by the end of this video. Business advisory services. Is it going into a business and understanding what's the company culture here? And then working with the leaders of that business to improve the company culture by implementing systems like the EOS operating system, et cetera. Yes, that's an example of business advisory services. Business advisory services, is it, is it going in and helping business owners understand exactly what their key performance indicators are and then putting systems into place to measure and improve their key performance indicators? Yes, business advisory again. Another example, is it working with a business owner to help them understand where are we going with this thing? Like, Trying to take it public, are we selling to a third party, are we selling to an internal younger partner or a family member? So succession planning, yes. Another example of business advisory services. So as you can tell, it expands like a wide range of, of opportunity, which again, is why I think it's a little bit intangible. And those are just three examples of, of dozens that I could give you. But the most important thing that I wanna talk in this video is to really explain to you the opportunity within the business advisory services space and how underutilized it is. And as an example, to really drive this home, I'm gonna reference a survey that was recently done. We'll include a link to that survey again in the description here. But what the survey did is it asked business owners about 15 different areas of, of planning that A, they're interested in, and B, they feel like their needs are either being met or unmet. So, an extreme example of this is 
probably if you're watching this video, the wealth management. So they, they asked the business owners, how many of you are interested in investment management? Good news, there's good news and bad news on each of these. Good news, 95% of people, the business owners surveyed, raised their hand and said, yes, I would like a professional to help me with my investment management, right? That's great. You line up 100 business owners, 95 of them step forward and say, yes, I'm looking for someone. Now, what's the, what's the downside of that? The follow-up question was, do you feel like those needs are being met by the current professionals you're working with? What percent of business owners do you feel like their needs were being met when it came to investment management? 88%. Oh, that's the bad news, right? So just again, picture this, you line up 100 business owners, step forward if you're looking for investment management, 95 of them step forward. Now, step back if you feel like your professional is already meeting your expectations. 88 out of those 100 step back. So what are you left with, seven? Seven percent, right? Seven percent that are like, hey, I'm looking for it and I'm not currently satisfied with what I've got. So if you're a financial advisor watching this, wealth manager, insurance agent even, and you're thinking, it feels like I'm always competing for business. Come on, this is a dog fight out here. The reason is because what I just said. Like, think about it, like, out of 100 people lined up, you're only looking for seven that are like, hey, I'm looking for this service, and I don't have anybody currently. And by the way, they're probably skeptical of the investment managers they're meeting anyways. So you're typically, you're competing with other professionals a, for those seven people, and then B, maybe you're moving somebody from Merrill and you're at a Ameriprise or you're at an independent RIA, and you're trying to move them from Edward Jones, etc. Dogfight. To highlight the discrepancy between the wealth management and those of you that are going to the marketplace trying to offer this compared to the business advisory, they asked those same business owners how many are looking for succession planning. Right? A professional to help you with succession planning. Out of those 100, 80 raised their hand and said, yes, I'm looking for a professional to help me with succession planning. So right there, you could say, oh, well, that's not as attractive of an opportunity because on the investment management, we had 95 out of the 100 step forward and say, yes, I'm looking in here. We only had 80. Now, here's the kicker. How many of those business owners do you think said that they are happy or satisfied with the advice that they're getting from their professionals when it comes to the succession planning? Pause for effect. One. Not 20%, not 10%, not 5%. One. One out of those 100 people actually said, yeah, I'm good. So what does that mean? 79% of business owners are A, looking for advice or professionals to help them with succession planning, and B, don't currently have anyone, right? So when you talk about an unmet marketplace or an unmet need in the marketplace, 79 out of 100 are saying, hey, anybody around here help with succession planning? I'd pay you for it, and I can't find anyone. That's what you call a, the beginning of a, of a, of a blue ocean opportunity. The point of this video, though, is not at all to go out and encourage you to take a course from me or from anybody else on how to become a succession planning expert. I think that's completely backwards. The point of this video is to say there's an unmet need in the marketplace. I don't think you should go out and get another designation, do another license, take another course, sign up for another program just to be able to offer one more trick to become a multi-trick pony, right? Jack of all trades, master of none. I think that's the, that's, that's the wrong way to go about this or to take this message. Rather, what I think we should do is leverage the concept of the who, not how, right? Which we've been preaching a team-based model approach. Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy in their recent book, Who, Not How, kind of really made that terminology popular. So I'll run with that for a minute, which is not how do I go out and start offering a succession planning tool or software, or how do I go out and become an expert in estate planning? How do I go out and start offering 1040s backwards? Look at this overall concept holistically. 
What are you really good at right now? What do you enjoy doing? Where is your revenue generated? And likely it is either here somewhere within the wealth management or here somewhere within the risk mitigation or maybe both. So do what you enjoy. Do what your business is already offering clients to do, but get a little bit more creative with the, with the way that you're servicing clients by leveraging other professionals. So it's not how do I go out and tap into the unmet need of the, of the succession planning marketplace. No. Who is already doing that? How do I then leverage other professionals in a virtual family office model to be able to attract those successful business owners to come and work within my ecosystem or my team or my virtual family office. That's the concept. That's the play. Then the thing that nobody believes me about at first, but I can give you dozens of examples. In fact, on our website, we have probably two dozen interviews with advisors. They think you need to compete for this, not realizing that if you focus on this, or focus on this, or focus overall on this, which means don't focus on competing or leading with a client trying to win the AUM or win the insurance. Instead, focus on the unmet need of the marketplace, build the trust, create the value, and then you know what I say? The AUM or the insurance comes along for the ride. That's one of my favorite terms. I happened to just stumble upon it and blurt it out at an event like five or six years ago. We've had dozens of advisors now make posts in our community saying, I thought Anton was full of it, but you know what just happened? We focused on tax planning. We focused on business advisory. We focused on X, Y, Z. Two months later, the client said, hey, you know that 900,000 I have over there? I'm going to roll it over for your management. 15 minute conversation to roll over 900 grand, right? It comes along for the ride because you've built the trust, you've built the relationship, you've built the, the client experience. Oh, and by the way, you can charge for this overall opportunity, right? So there's a lot of revenue to be had when you get a little bit more creative about the way you're approaching high net worth individuals and successful business owners, and then put together a more complete, complete package where they can experience something with you that they can't from the other nine advisors that are all competing for their AUM or the insurance. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, please. And if you have any comments, questions, type them into the chat box or the description below. Last thing I would say is if you know somebody that you think would enjoy this, please send it on off to them because the more people that watch it, the more YouTube says, hey, people actually like Anton's videos and the more it encourages me to keep doing free content like this. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video.